Hello there, eighth grade. Nice to see you today. It is fine Thursday and it is lab day. You don't have to get into your lab seats, but I would like you to get your book. Get your book. You can pause this video to get your book if you need to and bring it back uh, to uh, use it as we go along here. So I want to point a few things out. Obviously, on lab days here, we have to modify things a bit because we're not in the lab itself, obviously. Uh, so I'd like you to first turn to page 167, page 167. On this page, you will see the home activity, and there are a couple of options there. The first option is the actual home activity regarding little plastic. Now, I would imagine that over the last week and a half or so, you've probably been eating a lot of snack foods. And these snack foods probably come in some type of plastic wrappers, plastic bags, plastic containers. Well, plastic is an organic compound. There are many, many millions of different kinds of organic compounds. Some people spend their entire lives studying organic chemistry. Uh, but plastic is an organic compound and it reacts under different circumstances differently. And you'll see the, uh, the top home activity there on uh, page 167. You can give that a try. If you have permission to use your stove, please be careful and give it a try and don't hurt yourself. Now you'll see the alternate activity actually refers you to the classroom activity over on page 169. Now, I don't want you wasting food in this time, but if you in it, uh, I want you to feel free with permission, of course, to do this classroom activity because it enables you to actually make a very simple plastic from organic materials. And you only need a couple of things here. You need milk. Uh, the more fattier, the better. I don't know if it'll work too well with skim milk, uh, but you can try it if you want. And vinegar. Vinegar is what's called acetic acid in this classroom activity. So basically milk and vinegar. And uh, you're going to warm up the milk in a pot or a pan over the stove. Don't bring it to boiling, just below boiling. So if you see it boiling, you know, remove it from the heat right away. You don't want to burn it. Uh, but just heat it up. And once you've got it heated up, you're going to pour some vinegar into it. Now you can see the quantities there and you can see the proportions there. It's more milk and less vinegar. Uh, but if you add too much, it doesn't have to be precise. You know, you're just going to be draining off the excess. But when you pour that vinegar into the milk, you're going to be forming a simple type of plastic. And as according to the procedures, you're gonna strain off the liquid and then you're going to take the solid. And if you've got uh, maybe wax paper or a kitchen counter that you can get a little bit messy, if you can clean it up, maybe put something down, even aluminum foil, something to keep your work area clean. Don't make a huge mess at home, please. But you can take the glob of whatever it is that you have uh, formed, it's called the casein, uh, the, uh, the simple organic plastic, and you can mold it into a different shape. If you've made enough, you could flatten it out, use a cookie cutter and uh, make a different shape and then let it dry out thoroughly overnight. And, and, and you could even poke a hole through it and make a little ornament out of it and hang it up. Uh, but it's a pretty cool way to make a simple plastic. So those are your home activities that you can work on if you have time. You know, the, that making plastic can be kind of fun. Adding some food coloring adds a little bit. Of but what I want to focus on now is the lab activity on page 168. So if you turn to page 168 here, it has to do with making models of organic molecules and using those models to then create what are called structural formulas and then molecular formulas. Now, molecular formulas are those that you are most familiar with, like H2O, NaCl. Those things that you've been working with throughout the whole third marking period, those are called 
molecular formulas. But as some of you pointed out in your comments with some of the formula, but they are entirely different substances. And there's a reason for that. It has to do with the fact that carbon is super friendly, just like some of you are super friendly. You get along with everybody. Carbon, because of its four valence electrons, and you know what those are, they are very friendly with a variety of other elements, and they love to bond together with other things. So this lab activity, and we don't have models here. Uh, there are actual kits that we would use in the lab, but we're going we're gonna to modify, and you're going to use simple substances from home that hopefully you can uh, uh, find available to, uh, to make some models of your own. And I hope that by making models, it'll be easier for you to see it in three dimensions and then be able to draw what's called a structural formula. And that may sound familiar, hopefully, if you did your notes yesterday, the structural formula, and then from the structural formula, go to the molecular formula. So let's get started with this activity. I think a great a uh, piece of material, got marshmallows at home, <laughs> grab a, a handful of marshmallows. And when you're finished with the activity, not in the lab, but you can actually eat, eat your experiment when you're finished with it in your kitchen. Just don't make a mess, okay? But if you've got marshmallows around, they work great, okay? Uh, again, I don't have marshmallows. You could use You could use apples. If you've got apples laying around, they may be useful, or better yet, grapes. Grapes would be awesome to use for this particular experiment. Unfortunately, I ate all of my grapes, but some dried out and turned into raisins. So I do have some raisins, and I'm going to be using some raisins for this activity. And I also have some, some little, uh, little gummy candies here. Gummy candies will work well. Jelly beans, another good idea. The, uh, if, if you have Play-Doh, you can use Play-Doh. Just don't eat that when you're done. Uh, but the idea is to have something with you that you can poke some little sticks into it. I have here toothpicks. If you've got toothpicks, toothpicks will work perfectly for this activity. If you don't have toothpicks, uh, Find little sticks outside, maybe, and use little sticks. Uh, use something small, yeah, paper clips. If you've got paper clips, open up paper clips, use paper clips. You want to use something that you can poke into one of these softer items in order to make your models. So here I go. I have, I have my door plate. Oop, I just lost a raisin. <laughs> it's not a lab. It's my uh, library. Um, I've got some raisins on one plate because I'm going to use some raisins. And on my uh, veggie tails plate, mm, that raisin is really sweet. Mm. Excuse me. On my veggie tails plate, I have some uh, some little squeezy candies. I don't know what they're called, but they're like fruit fruit snacks. What are they? Yeah, there they are. Uh, Mott's assorted fruit flavored snacks. They're really good, actually. I don't normally eat them because they stick to my teeth. But uh, all the little treats this week are good. Oh, I shouldn't have put that in my mouth. Now my mouth is watering. So we've got some candies. Mm, excuse me. And we got some raisins. You want to have at least two different things for this activity because what you need to do with these items is to create models of organic compounds. So what in the world am I talking about here? Well, let's just get to building a model. I'm gonna say one of my fruit candies represents an atom of carbon. Now, if you look at your periodic table in your book, you know what group number carbon is in. Look in your periodic table. What group number is carbon in, everybody? What was that? Four. Very good. And what does that group number tell you? How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. Very good. Now, we're going to represent those four valence electrons with toothpicks. So I'm going to stick four 
toothpicks into my little gummy candy. And so as I do this, one toothpick at a time, I'm putting them in four different directions. So when I'm finished, this is going to illustrate for us one atom of carbon. Hopefully you can see it here. One atom of carbon and four valence electrons, which will enable this carbon atom to form four covalent bonds. Carbon is a sharer. Covalent. It's going to share its valence electrons with other things. And in organic chemistry, most of those other elements that carbon loves to share electrons with is this element here, hydrogen. Hydrogen, which I am simulating with a raisin. So I'm going to put a raisin at the end of each of my toothpicks. And these raisins, just one raisin each, these raisins uh, simulating hydrogen, think about hydrogen on the periodic table. What group number is hydrogen in? One, very good. And uh, how many valence electrons does hydrogen have everybody? One, very good. And so that one valence electron of hydrogen is going to be shared with the valence electrons of the carbon atom. And as a result, every carbon atom very neatly forms four covalent bonds. And in this model, this, would, this is a model of the simplest type of organic molecule, the simplest type of hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon, methane. Because as you know from your notes, the prefix meth means one, one carbon atom. The prefix tells you how many carbon atoms there are. The suffix, either the ane, ene, or ein, the a-n-e, e-n-e, or y-n-e, they're in alphabetical order, a-e-y, represent the type of bonds. If it ends in A-N-E, they're all single bonds. If it ends in E-N-E, there are double bonds, which I'll get to. And if it ends in a Y-N-E, there are triple bonds, three bonds. So let me explain this to you. So here is a model of methane. Methane, one carbon, all single bonds, and there are four hydrogens. In fact, if you hold it, just like this in front of you, you can see that the carbon is in the middle and coming out from the carbon are these lines representing the bonds and there is a hydrogen at the end of each of these bonds. Look in your notes and look at the structural formula for methane and you'll see the letter C in the middle with four lines coming around with an H at the end of each of those lines. That's how this model can help you uh, see the structural formula. Now going from the structural formula to the molecular formula, again, refer to your notes, we simply count the carbons and the hydrogens. How many carbons are there? That's right, one. How many hydrogens are there? That's right, four. So our molecular formula here is CH4. So in this little demonstration, we've taken some common items. We've created a model. From this model, we drew a structural formula. And from the structural formula, you can write a molecular formula. So let's do another one. Here we have methane. Now, Remember, every carbon can only have four sticks coming out from it. 
four covalent bonds total. That's, that's really, really important here. So let's say we remove one of these hydrogens. Yum, yum, yum. And we take another model and we add a carbon instead of that hydrogen here. So check this out. Now I have two carbons, one here, one here. Each of the carbons can only have four bonds coming out from them. So count how many sticks are coming out from each one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Every carbon has only four lines coming out from it. Now, if you were to draw the structural formula of this, you would see that there's a C connected to a C with a single line. And then each C has four lines coming out. There are three hydrogens on this one, and there are three hydrogens on this one. And if we were to take the structural formula and write a molecular formula, it would be C2H6. C2H6. Now, what would the name of this molecule be? What would the name of this molecule be? Think about it. The prefix tells you how many carbons there are. So how many carbons are there? Two. What prefix matches up with two? If you look in your notes, you will see that the prefix is F. F means two. We have a single bond between these carbons, so the suffix would be A, N, E. So this would be, what do you think it would be? Let me hear you. Ethane. This is an example of ethane. This is ethane, or at least a model of one. Okay, so maybe after these first two examples, you see how this is building upon it. But I want to take a moment to go and, and, and ex explain to you that second suffix, the E-N-E. -E. What does that E-N-E -E mean? Well, let's take a look at one of our models again. Oh, I lost the hydrogen. Oh, that's right. I ate it. Sorry about that. So here we have methane, one carbon, four one, two, three. Oh, wait, I added another one. Oh, I got the wrong number. Four hydrogens. All right. So this is methane. Now, that second prefix, E-N-E, -E, that means that there has to be a double bond between two carbon atoms. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take two of these hydrogens off so that we've got two sticks, a double bond. This is a double bond. And we're going to connect that to another carbon over here like this. So here we have one carbon, two carbons, but notice how they are connected. They are connected with a double bond. But remember what I said earlier. Every carbon can only have four covalent bonds. So let's look at this carbon here. This carbon has one bond, two bonds, three bonds, four bonds. It still only has that magic number, four. And look at this carbon here. One, two, three, four. Still only four. You have to maintain that magic number four for each carbon. So let's, let's take this model now and see if we can make a structural formula. It'll be a C connected to another C, and I just lost an H. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to eat that later. So we have two Cs connected with a double line, and out from each of those carbons, we have two more lines at the end of which are connected our hydrogen atoms. So the structural formula 
would be a C, double line C, and each of the Cs would have two more lines coming out with Hs for hydrogens. Now, taking that structural formula and, and writing a molecular formula, you simply write down how many Cs are there? C, two. How many hydrogens are there? H, four. So C2H4 would be the molecular formula for this compound. Now let's see if we can name it. What would the name of this compound be? Well, remember, the names of these hydrocarbons are based on adding prefixes and suffixes together. So how many carbons? Two. What is the prefix for two? Look at your notes and you'll see that the prefix is F. E T H. So this is going to be F. But what is the suffix going to be? Well, suffix is based on the type of bond between the two carbons. What type of bond do we have here? It's not a single bond, it's a double bond. So what is the suffix for a double bond? Ene. So the name of this would be F. Ethene. Ethene would be the name of this model. Now, it's taken quite a, quite a while to explain this, and I would like you to give it a shot and, and send me in the comments some of the materials that you use to make your models, but I'm not going to have you finish the entire thing. We don't have to worry about filling in that entire data table, okay? What I'd like you to do, one, two, three, four, five, six, just the first six lines in your data table, I'd like to see if you can make some models of those first six hydrocarbons. Don't worry about the rest of them. I'm not going to quiz you on those. All right. I'd love to hear from you uh, and, and tell me what kind of what kind of materials did you use for your models? And if you can send some pictures, that would be awesome too. send some pictures my way as to what creative materials you used. And I'm gonna start talking now because I'm getting hungry and uh, I'm gonna eat my experiment. I'm just upset that I don't have marshmallows to add to it because marshmallows would be really good right now. But uh, I'll make sure I finish up my experiment by eating my apple to clean all this other stuff out of my teeth. So I hope you are eating healthily at home. Have fun doing this experiment. And I will see you later.